Good afternoon. The Year 10 Parent Teacher Interviews serve two main purposes. The first is to offer an appraisal of your son's academic effort and performance to this point. And the second is to begin a conversation about his subject pathway for the remaining years at school. It is important the conversations you have over the next few weeks will give a clear picture of the way forward. And it's also important that boys feel a genuine ownership of these decisions. We believe in breadth in education, but it's also important to marry breadth with a certain expertise. And at points during a school career, we allow students to specialise. This occurs when boys have developed enough academic ambition and maturity to be offered that choice. They have a say in the subjects they study, and these need to satisfy both interest and ambition. To a certain extent, as a student, you can devise your own pathway through years 11 and 12. But choices that you did make heading into year 10 will mean that some options are more logical than others. To the boys, I say, take your time to evaluate all combinations that appeal to you. Do not be afraid to change your mind a few times between now and when you finally put ink to paper. Likewise, do not move in circles with your thinking and don't be afraid to make a decision. It's worth making the point that most decisions are judged in retrospect, depending on the outcome of those decisions. But it is rarely the decision itself that is good or bad. It is the effort you applied to ensure the consequences equaled success. Finally, your decision should be born out of interest, talent and ambition. What am I good at and what do I want to learn more about? If you satisfy both of these criteria for a subject or course, you are likely to be rewarded. Don't please try to plot a maximum reward for minimum effort. You only get one chance at formal education, so do not try and get away with learning the least amount possible. Those are the generalities, and now for the specifics. Because essentially there are two choices that need to be made. The first is whether to follow an IB or SACE pathway, and the second is to choose six subjects within your chosen course. Mr McKinnon and Dr Browning will be offering more specific detail in separate presentations, so I'll stick to some basic messages for now. My first point is that the IB is superior to SACE. It is more rigorous and provides a better education. It is more coherent and more academically valid. It is more motivating and will provide a better learning experience. It is harder, but the grade boundaries are lower as a result, and all of our modelling suggests that the final ATAR is the same whichever course a boy chooses. So if you care about nothing but the final number, you can toss a coin between SACE and IB because you'll get the same final number. But if you understand the key purpose of school is to become as well-educated as possible, there is only one sensible choice. The IB is a realistic option for around about 75%, I think, of our Year 10 cohort, because given the way it is assessed, the lowest passing score in the IB gets you an ATAR of around about 70. For those boys, which is around 20% of the cohort, that get an ATAR of below 70, it makes sense to play it safe. But for any boy in or near the top half of a year group, the IB is an option I promote strongly. My second point is about subject choice. In simple terms, boys should pick subjects they are good at and the subjects they enjoy. In the IB, subject choice is guided by the fact that boys pick from a fixed set of groups, so the process is straightforward. Choice in SACE is more tricky because there are more subjects and there are also tiers within certain subjects like English and mathematics. A further complication is that though all subjects are graded on precisely the same scale, from A plus to E minus, they are scaled differently when it comes to calculating ATAR. For example, straight B grades in the least academic subjects will get you an ATAR of around 50. Straight B grades in the most academic subjects will get you an ATAR of around 85. In the end, you're awarded by embracing academic challenge, which is as it should be. My final point about subject choice is to be ambitious, but also to be realistic. It is unlikely you will succeed in a course in which you have hitherto performed poorly. Just because some subjects are new doesn't mean that everyone comes to them with the same chance of success. And indeed, your biggest predictor of ATAR are your school exam results to this point. But also remember that having to work hard for success is natural. You need to persevere with subjects and not expect them all to be plain sailing. There are plenty of channels of communication that exist to help you make an informed choice, including me, the relevant assistant director, academic leader, tutor, year-level coordinator, your teachers and your parents. 
Do not be swayed by rumour that some subjects are difficult and there's lots of work in this subject because all subjects are a lot of work if you wish to be successful at them. Each year, some students review their choices a week or two into the school year because the class is not to their liking or the material isn't quite what they expected or the first couple of lessons were a bit hard or boring. We are not totally unsympathetic, but I do advise you not to rip up all the careful thinking that you did by some knee-jerk reaction next year. Some courses, after all, start hard and then they level off. Others have a nice gentle lead-in, and but they do get hard later on. Academic subjects, very much like life, must be lived forwards, but often you can only understand them backwards. Finally, it's worth remembering that the purpose of education is to become an educated person, and it needs no more justification than that.